Prince Philip told me I was a funny-looking fellow when I was a ball boy at Wimbledon. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> what, uh, what year was this? Oh, I was about 12 or 13, about 84, maybe? Something like that, ages ago. How did you get into being a ball boy? How did I get into it? Well, I just psyched myself up. Give me a and balls today, yeah! Okay. How does the system of oh, selecting I was in, ball boys work? And I was in a tennis manage? club uh, in my sort of local village and I used to play tennis and there was a, uh, a lottery thing and you could go along and two people from every tennis club went along. Yeah, I, I thought they were from sort of schools around the Wimbledon area. That's what I thought. Where were you at school, Jimmy? The Wimbledon area. <laughs> wow, he's, he's really foxed us there. Yeah. <laughs> And you were lined up, all the ball boys and ball girls. Yeah, it was after the, the women's final. Everyone's lined up, like who, hundreds which, of us. Which final? Who, who, who had played? It was years ago. It was the Ivan Lendl kind of era. She, he's woman. unlikely to make the women's final. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who was um, Prince Philip there with? I think it's the Duke and Duchess of Kent or something. I don't really know the royals well, that well. Well, that's the thing. It's usually the Duke and Duchess of Kent that do all the Wimbledon yeah. stuff, rather than Prince Philip, who's got more important sporting events to go and be racist at. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you're a ball by Wimbledon, but I just don't think, don't think Prince Philip often turns up to Wimbledon. He, he, he does. He does, actually. He told yeah. me I was a fun-looking fellow when I was there, so... Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> well, that's, that's how I know that, yeah. That's a clincher, though. Um, <laughs> Do you have any, any concept of what particular aspect of your demeanour that he found funny-looking? I, I think... can answer this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll all have a go. We'll start with <laughs> it. We'll go yeah. around that. <laughs> What's funny about my massive head? <laughs> Do you, do you think you frightened the prince with your appearance? Is that... <laughs> he was actually really freaked out. <laughs> do you know, that, that joke works if you don't do that. <laughs> do you know what? I thought you could never look more like a ventriloquist dummy. Do you know that <laughs> <laughs> right, David, what do you reckon? Yeah, well... Is he telling the truth? What do you think? It could be true because of his face, but... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, I don't think... I don't think you're ugly. I just think... <laughs> Bullied by Jamelia. How did that happen? <laughs> so, David, what's your team deciding here? I, I think it could be true. I don't know. I, I don't trust you. You're a funny-looking fellow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, see that's, um, that's the crucial detail. Yeah. Um, I'm edging towards a lie. Mm. You're saying it's a lie. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Jimmy Carr. Well, I can tell you, it is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lie. Uh, Prince Philip didn't tell Jimmy he was a funny-looking fellow at Wimbledon. What a moment. Perhaps the funniest man in Britain, known for his off-colour material, finally getting to meet Jimmy Carr. <laughs> <laughs> I developed a word association system to remember people's names, but gave it up when it backfired on me. David. Um, what, what was the word association system? Um... That I developed to help remember people's uh, names. It was I. Jack, um, you've just got a bit of fluff on you. Thank you very much. Keep thinking. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 what I do is I attach uh, a quality to someone and then try and and then try and relate that quality to the person's name. So just for example, so what would that uh, be? so Jason Manford. If I if I think Jason and the Argonauts and that that would perhaps and then next time I'll see you I'll think. Argonauts will make me think of Jason. What's Argonaut like about Jason? <laughs> uh, uh, for instance, J Jason the Argonauts, mm. I might therefore J an Argonaut gives me Juggernaut. Right. And you look to me like a lorry driver. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> therefore, I would think lorry driver Jason. And then when you next meet him, you say, Hi, Yorkie, how are you? This, well, uh, it, it has been known to is, backfire. Which is where we come to the hilarious backfiring anecdote. Oh, um, <laughs> that was a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, we, we met someone uh, on holiday, and um, he uh, was his name was Charles, 
and he wore uh, very big sunglasses like, like, like a, only a blind person would wear. Mm. And um, so I thought, that's brilliant, Ray Charles, because I will remember... I remember from the sunglasses, and therefore I will get Charles. And then the very... So next year when we go, I can confidently say, hello, Charles. But it didn't work, because 12 months later, and you've slightly forgotten what, what you'd set up as a system. So he walks in, I go, hello, Stevie. <laughs> Where did, you, where did you meet him? Where was it? On the holiday. Where was it? <laughs> in Holidayville. Yeah. Just in Do uh, Dorset. It was in Dorset. And what? So you were in a pub. You were in a pub, and he walked over, and you went Stevie. Uh, he came. Uh, yeah, it was the following year, and I saw him again. Uh, in, did in, he live in, round where, there? Where were you sat? No, he was a fellow holiday maker. So, and you, de <laughs> you developed a, a sort of mild acquaintanceship with a man whose name you could barely remember, but yes. planned to holiday with him again. <laughs> no, there was no plan involved, David. We didn't get together and say, are you going to be here next year? Yes, are you? But you obviously thought it was a possibility, because you already had a plan for remembering his name. <laughs> I perhaps didn't explain correctly yeah. that I'd seen him the previous year at the same place and not known his name. So now he's so three years on the <laughs> <laughs> So for three years, you and Charles holidayed with, with metronomic regularity <laughs> at the same place in Dorset. You kind of escaped well, that's the that's not so unusual. People tend to frequent the same well, place for holiday. Year one... You, you see him, but you don't exchange names. And then year yeah. two, you yeah. learn his name. To, to clarify this point, year one, there's no reason why I would know his name, because I hadn't been introduced to him. No. Th there's no reason for you to know year, his name at all. Year two, I had forgotten his name, but endeavoured to remember it for the third year. <laughs> right. All right, David. Is that the truth, or is it part of Jack's impish sense of fun and a lie? Um, I think it's the truth. Do you? I think it's a lie. I think... I think it's true. I think I'm going to go for true. Fine, that's all right. You know, You're but... saying true? That's fine. Yeah. That's the team decision. OK. Jack D. It was uh, true. Oh, oh hey. Hey. That's me. Very good. Well done. Don't believe me. <laughs> Sean Locke, you're next. While travelling around Europe, my friend and I came up with a scheme to make money on the beach. <laughs> Please, team. What was it? It was, um, it was jewellery. We used to sell jewellery. What kind of jewellery was it? It was earrings. And where did you get the earrings from? Um... <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest, we'd make them. Oh, it's homemade jewellery. <laughs> Here we go. Um, wh where was the beach? Where, where was the beach? <laughs> it's right next to the sea. <laughs> <laughs> it was in Greece. What was it about being on that beach? You thought, earrings. Um... <laughs> I couldn't make donuts. <laughs> OK. <laughs> what did you make the earrings out of? Well, I, I didn't make them. My, my friend made them. And what do you make them out of? <laughs> Beads. <laughs> now, this friend, Sean, what was his name? Spud. Spud. <laughs> Spud. Spud. Yeah, was his name. Spud the Jew. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my job was to sell them. Oh, ah, so them. you're the salesman. So, so give us a bit of pad. Imagine David is he's on the beach in his thong, he's relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, he can be himself, okay? okay? And you come along and you look at his ears, they're unadorned, you think yeah. there's an opportunity. <laughs> Off you go. Well, the first thing, if he's got a thong on, I'll ask him to turn over. <laughs> Can you rub onto your back, please? <laughs> <laughs> and would you like me to rub a bit of cream into that area? Because I don't think that's ever seen the sunshine. <laughs> he wasn't the target market, yeah. isn't it? Well, would you like to make the jewellery? You like, like the jewellery around the neck to sell them to Richard? Are you having a nice time? Yeah, I'm having a lovely time. Do you want to buy some earrings? Not really, no. <laughs> What's All wrong right, with me? <laughs> I've right. turned over and everything. <laughs> What was Spud's real name? Keith. <laughs> Why did you call him Spud? He always had a jacket on. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? Judy, do we think that's truth or a lie? I think, I think it's a lie. You don't, I not... can't see him selling beaded earrings on a beach. Would you buy anything from him? No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know what, I'm going to go, I think, I think Judy's right. It is a lie. Yeah. I'm going to go with the team. You're going to say lie, Sean. Truth or lie? True! Ah. <laughs> yes, it's true. Sean did used to sell earrings on the beach. On doctor's advice, I have to sleep in a cycle helmet due to the violent nature of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lee, well, where to begin? Tell us about the violent nature of your dreams. Yes. Uh, I move a lot within the dreams. They're active rather than, rather than like hack and slash movie type violent. Okay. Uh, they're more, I'm playing a match or I'm running or something. Yeah. And I move a lot in the bed. Do you Father, think... what damage can you do to yourself with a pillow? It's the, well, it's only thing you can get around, but I can snap. I can, you know, I can, it, it can go back quite via, you know, like, I can recoil. What does your wife think? Does she, do you share a, a bed? I do, I, do, I, I do share a bed, yes. When did the doctor prescribe the helmet? It was, it was during my teenage years. It was late, late teens, whatever, that stage that it began to... That is the that. age when you start tossing and turning. Yes. <laughs> you no, 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 no. I'm not, ha no, I'm not having that. If, if I can't make an innocent comment... <laughs> Please, this isn't never mind your buzzcocks. <laughs> I dreamt, this is true, I dreamt the other night that I was being spooned, I was the spoonie, uh, with a lion. <laughs> seriously, seriously, and I could feel its, its, its oh. big, hairy arms and its legs, well, they're all legs, aren't they? All legs around me, and I could feel it, and I could smell it, and it was so vivid, and I liked it. <laughs> So the last thing I would have done is lash out because I was feared for my life. Yeah, but I didn't have that dream. Uh, <laughs> you, you feared for your life and you liked it. It so was I a lion. Said you, I thought when you said you liked it, you must have in some way thought you were safe with this lion. But it was actually the fear that you liked. We've all had experiences in bed, David, where we are simultaneously afraid and excited. <laughs> yeah. So, Dara, back to the, mm, back yeah, to the, the, the image. Yeah, the what do you wear in bed? Other than that, yeah. a pyjamas and a t-shirt. It's a lovely look. <laughs> the pyjama with, with the jacket, I don't wear the jacket, though. No, <laughs> no. no. It's not no, unnecessary form. If you wear a blazer in bed, it would clash with your yeah. cycle helmet. <laughs> it is odd, isn't it, the way pyjamas have a collar that could take a tie. <laughs> Yeah, that's the cycle helmet. It's Il Petr Cech, the, the goalkeeper yeah. for Chelsea, yeah. right? You better explain to David who Yeah, you... there's a footballer called Petr Cech who got kicked in the head once, right? Okay, the and... goalkeeper's the one that owns the club, right? Get him, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, he got kicked in the head and he wears a kind of a padded head. It's very similar to that, like, because, right. you know, yeah, and if you've had a previous head injury and I had a, you know, if you've had a knock in the you've past... Had a what was your previous head injury? I, 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 I literally fell off a bike when I was a teenager. I went off a bike uh, and... How ironic! The they make you wear a cycle helmet to remind you of that Terrible, terrible day. <laughs> when did you start wearing the cycle helmet in bed? That was when I was 16. So you've been wearing it in bed since you were 16? Yeah. Uh, how old are you now? 39. So obviously on your honeymoon night you wore it, did you? <laughs> she was used to that, she'd seen it, yeah. So, oh. so every night? I've heard of so sex. Nate, sex. During sex? <laughs> during not, sex not are you wearing it? Because yeah. yeah. then you're really thrashing around, yeah. aren't you? Do you presume that there's no gap between the end of sex and sleep that I couldn't <laughs> then go, oh, that was magic? Uh, do you I know what? To me, yeah. it's more disturbing. <laughs> to be able to go, that was marvellous, Dick. What the hell are you putting on your head? Lee, it's time to take a guess. Well, what do you it, think? If he's not telling the truth, he's made life very hard for himself because he, he didn't have to say he was doing it for 23 years. <laughs> well, how long have you known him for? I never slept with him. No. <laughs> I, I don't. Oh, no, it's lie, lie. So it's a lie. So, Dara, are you telling the truth or was it a lie? That, is that scar that goes in there to there? Huh? Yeah? Nah, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I I once put out a fire using my neighbour's milk. <laughs> Are these team? Is that possible? <laughs> was it a was it a very small fire? Um, it was it was you know a fire. Say say for example that desk was on fire. It'd be about, it was about that big, and it wasn't just one neighbour's. It was it was about fifteen neighbours. Fifteen neighbours. What <laughs> yeah. what time of day was this? In the morning when the milk came. 
Well, one of your neighbours were up early enough to bring the milk. It was a Saturday. It was a Saturday. <laughs> Because it's a Saturday, they haven't a lie in and you get double milk because of the Sunday, you know. So what was on fire, please? Just on, the, like, a, on like, a field, there was, like, some dried grass just and... Just a bonfire, then? <laughs> well, it, no, it just sort of... We just thought, oh, look at that dried grass, let's set it on fire. And, you know, that's what you do when what? you're 25. And you... and, uh, <laughs> I think we're about eight or nine. But basically, you're an arsonist, you started the fire... Yes. ..and then stole some milk in order to put it out. <laughs> Well, it could have just burnt out quite happily on its own. There was no need, really, to pour... Yeah, but at eight, I it mean, eight. I've not got this knowledge of fire. We'd, I'd seen three episodes of London's Burning. I don't know what I mean. <laughs> I'm not sure that adds up, Jason. <laughs> How long's London Burning been on? I think you can believe him, he's seen London's Burning. <laughs> I'm not sure London's Burning, the programme, was on. So you're disputing when London's Burning first came onto our screen? Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, that's it, yes. Right, Jason was born in 1981, so he is alleging that by 1989, London's Burning was already on television. I, I believe 1981. him. 1981. <laughs> 1981, he looks like me uncle. <laughs> anyway, can we get back to the story? Yeah, that yeah, we're yeah, yeah. Yeah. How far do you have to go to get the milk? I was a kid, I, I didn't measure it. I, I mean, mean, about... Well, give us a rough... Tw 12 and a half metres. About 12 and a half metres. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just get to knock at the door and say, quick, quick, the, the field's on fire? Because then that would be admitting yeah. that and there was a it. fire. Whereas in this instant, the only thing that happened was a milkman got sacked for not delivering milk. I think... <laughs> In other words, just to clarify, before we say our decision, you, you, you took how many bottles of milk to, to put out the fire? Um, f 15 or something. Ah, 15. 15 10, well, I take you back to your earlier answer, which was 15 houses, and on a Saturday they got double milk. <laughs> He took one pint from each. <laughs> so what are you going to say, Lee? What, what, what are you going for here? Oh, they, they, I they, don't they, know now. The whole answer was delivered in such an implausible and frankly guilty-sounding way. <laughs> yeah. What do you think we're uh, I think it's a truth. Well, Jason, where were you, where were you brought up? Manchester. Yeah, you see, I was brought up around Manchester. And I can imagine the bit about you saying, all right, let's go in there and set fire to a field. Believable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go, oh, no, that's a bit big. Better put it out with some milk and be good citizens. Yeah. It doesn't really sort of add up. So what are you going to plump for? You're saying the truth. Truth. You're saying a lie. Yeah. I'll go with, I'll go with Miranda and say yeah. we think that's the truth. You're saying it's the truth. OK, like so, uh, Jason, is it, it the truth? is a... True. Wow. Right. Once on Christmas Day, I was forced to hitchhike my way home and was picked up by four different drivers. <laughs> Please do. Where were you going from and to? I was going from London down to Hastings. How old are you? Uh, I was about 17 and a half. And because nothing was running on Christmas Day or you were skint? No, what happened was I was meant to go home on Christmas Eve, but I missed the last train. So you started your journey in London? I did. And how long did it take to get picked up? Um, the first bit? Not long, actually. Ten minutes-ish. And, and he said... Would, would you like to come back and have Christmas lunch with me? I'm very lonely. Seriously, he said that? Yeah. What sort of a man was he? Uh, <laughs> he was a gay man in his mid-70s. How far did you go with him? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, how far on your journey did you go? He, he dro I think he drove me about ten miles, right. something like that. So that's the first person. Yeah. And then, do you remember the second one? A uh, woman yes. who um, picked me up round about the Eltham area, I oh. think. I like a euphemism early on in the show. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been picked up in the Eltham area, haven't we? Actually, you're, you're more accurate than you realise. She, uh, she actually did make a pass at me. You, this is two now. Well, um, she said, where do you want to go? <laughs> uh, and I said, down to the coast, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> did she go down to the coast? Well, what she actually did was she put her arm round my neck and tried to kiss me. She did. What had led her to believe that this was a possibility? What had happened? The mistletoe on the wing mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she tried to kiss me. I opened the door and got out of the car and ran away. Ah, so yeah. that explains the second story. Right, okay. now get to the third one. The, third, the third guy um, was deaf. <laughs> <laughs> 
he... I'll tell you what, if this turns out to be a lie, you deserve a medal for the... <laughs> For making this as least plausible as possible en route to the story. But, OK, so he's deaf. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I, I had to write down where I wanted to go. Uh, and you said Hastings on the card? Yeah. What did he say? He didn't say anything. He just started driving. <laughs> oh, my That's a bit God. menacing, isn't it? <laughs> he didn't look scary. And who was the fourth? The, the fourth was a, a farmer. <laughs> he said that he was fed up with his... <laughs> so he took me all the way to Hastings. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's having a bad day on Christmas Day and decides to just he'd rather drive you to Hastings. Well, uh, he said that he told his wife he was going out for a paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the end, really, cos he dropped me off where I was going. Did you invite the man in for a mince pie or something? You know? No. You didn't so... even invite him in? No. <laughs> Do you think that's a bit weird? I don't. I think it's the weirdest bit of the story. <laughs> <laughs> He's given you a lift all the way to Hastings no. on Maybe. Christmas Day. He's the only one who hasn't made a sexual pass at you. <laughs> He's been entirely honourable. Right. Just give him a little bit of a mince pie and some brandy butter. <laughs> so what do you think? It, there's a lot of detail in there. I think it's not true. Based on... I think she's just it's got too many characters, like a Tarantino film. <laughs> <laughs> the bit I'm doubting is that... Wouldn't you just write on a piece of paper, Hastings, and hope someone's going to Hastings, rather than anyone going sort of that way, and I'll just keep getting out and getting out? Have you ever hitched heights? You sound very, very idealistic about it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not getting in a car until I'm going to Hastings. <laughs> What day of the year it is? <laughs> Hastings, no. <laughs> Paul does have a point. That's I'm not very... how it works. You just go a little bit, yeah. and then maybe, and that's part of the fun of, of hitchhiking. Well, who you'll don't meet. try and pretend to me you've ever hitchhiked. I know you well. <laughs> Getting at the back of a Mercedes once a week is not hitchhiking. <laughs> I've seen it in films, though. <laughs> so, true. Ray thinks it's true. true. It's got to be true. Okay. Too wacky to be made up. So, you think they're too wacky yeah. to be made up? You think they're too wacky to be true? Yeah, I think she, she enjoyed making them up. <laughs> so, what's it going to be, then, Lee? OK, well, we'll, we'll say... Uh, be it on your head, Ray, but we'll say it's the truth. Saying it's the truth. OK, yeah. Joe Brand. Truth or lie? It is... True. <laughs> 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 